happen. Near Campbelltown. Alright, let's check out this Iron Jesus player. So it's a 6 max $1 sit and go. Ooh, two pair. That's a good start. Uh, well, you, mm, you can just bet or you can check raise. Both are fine lines. I think because people are more passive in low stakes games, I prefer betting. So I just bet for value three streets and go like 50 chips here. 30 is a bit small, but you have the right idea. So I'd continue value betting like crazy. Go 100 or 120. Okay, raise like 130. Whoa, whoa, what are we doing, man? We have two pair. We, we want to go broke. So raise big for value. Uh... The funny thing about this is that he might be doing this with a worse two pair and then call a bet. Like, he could be doing this with Queen Jack, thinking that he has a monster, and then if you raise, he's going to call. So you played this so weirdly that I think you have to raise the river for value, even though his, his line is quite strong. I don't know, I just, just raise the turn and it makes it very easy. Um, I would raise, because you beat... He's going to bet call here with Queen Jack, hands like... Uh, Jack 7, Jack 3, Queen 3, all those are in his range. So, raise. Good. It's good that you recognize that, but I think turn was definitely a mistake. Okay, we'll fold there. So if you guys haven't seen one of these before, it just allows me to review hand histories a bit more in depth without a time bank timing down. And if there's a tough spot, we can look at it in a calculator we can do some math and we can find out what the um the best play is. Oh that guy's a reg? You have five hundred hands. I called because he always fires out of position. If he always fires out of position it's an even better reason for you to raise. Because he's bluffing more often. And um well if he's a reg and you're playing against him a lot, if he always does that play, you you want to I guess have a raising range there. And if you're not raising true pair, then what are you raising? So I, I think you just need to raise, man. Alright. Um, let's get on with this review. Uh, it only costs 30. I'd probably call. It's a limited pot. He might have total trash, and then he shuts down on the turn, and you can just take it to the river, and your pair could be good. It only costs 30 chips, so... I don't mind a call there. Oh, I missed a hand. Okay. I'll do this quite quickly, just because I don't want people to get bored if they don't like watching this. Uh, wait, what the hell? Do we bet that? Mm -mm. This is a mistake. Multi-way pots, you need to have a very strong hand in order to put money in the pot. So you need two pair or better, or a very strong draw. This is bottom pair, no kicker. Check fold is your line here. 60, this just, I don't know what you're doing. And now we actually have a better hand and we check. I mean, I would bet again. <laughs> now you're in an awkward spot, you have to fold. But, I mean, the mistake was definitely on the flop. Raise, good. Bet, good. Well done. Okay. Fold that. Check, that's fine. I'd bet, just because it's awkward to play if you let someone else have the betting lead and then you have to check call down, because there are a bunch of bad turn cards. Hearts, Queen, Ace, even a, a Nine's not that great. So, yeah, I'd just bet. Good. It's a little small for me. I think if you're in a multi-way pot and you want to bet, bet bigger than half pot. Yeah, I do MTTs as well, Alligator. Oh, it depends on how big. I do 180 man sit and goes. That's the biggest I'll do. Because I don't want to review like a 600 hand tournament. It'll take too long for the stream and it's too boring. I like your bet. You're getting thin value against hands like King 9, uh, Queen Jack with a with a heart draw, or maybe a 10, like Ace 10. So I think your bet's fine. We're folding if he raises. Good. It's fine. Did you stop playing because everyone got too good? I mean, everyone got much better, but not really. I mean, it was harder to make money, and that certainly factored into my decision. But the main reason was just I didn't enjoy it playing for a living anymore. Like, I used to, when I was playing a lot, I used to wake up and just want to play poker every single day, all day. But it got to a point where I would wake up and just never play because I didn't want to play. And, you know, 
you're not going to make money if you don't want to go to work. I'm sure most of you guys don't want to go to work, but I was lucky enough that I had the choice to just quit, and that's what I did. So we don't have anything, we're just giving up. Okay. That folds fine. Fold the queen seven. Uh, I would just fold this. I think it's too marginal with the short stack from this position unsuited. That's a fold. Okay, fine. Bet. Great. Good bet, Slippy3. I do like your play so far. Uh, I would play this. Just um, limp stab. If you don't want to raise, just call the 20 chips and bet any flop. It's a very cheap way of stealing. Folding queen high th here, I think, is too weak. Okay, we'll fold that. Fold. Fold. Free flop. <laughs> you you just love stabbing these multi-way pots. I think this is a losing play in the long run. Because, um... I mean, it's uh, it's second pair, no kicker. You, you're turning your, your hand into a bluff. So, I just don't like this. I, I think you're better off just giving it up, because if someone's going to put chips in, they have a better hand than you, basically. What, what What's going on? Just check the turn. You're not going to get many worse hands to call. I guess there are a bunch of draws, but it's it's weird, because he might just check shove the turn or check raise with a draw, and then you're in a weird spot. Or well, now you have to value bet. Yeah, good. Do you think turbos, not hypers, are dead? Still make a profit? Work your way up to limits and stuff like that? Really enjoy them? Everyone tells me they're dead. No, no. Alex, um, Alex? They're profitable at any stake, but... Once you get to a certain level, people usually play other games, and you're not going to find that, uh, like, the $100 games, it used to be a time when those would load all day, every day, but nowadays, you'll very rarely see a $100 game load up. But, you know, up to the $30, there's heaps of fish, so it's very profitable in the low stakes, and then when you get to, like, 30 to 100 that's when there's a lot of regs, but it's still profitable, because you'll still get enough fish. We swept my 180-man final table. Not today, Kawhi. Good luck, though, man. Where can I find some Nash heads-up charts? In the description below, American Hurricane. In the um, the FAQ, there should be a link right at the bottom, I think. I would call 30 chips, getting 5-1 to one with a suited hand. Just trying to flop something good. Okay, let's raise that. It's fine. Hmm. He's pretty short. You can just shove here and say... I mean... It's a paired board. If he doesn't have an 8, you've got the best hand, most likely. So I would probably just shove. Alright. I mean, it, with your bet, if he checks shoves, you're committed. That's the funny thing about this. Because if he shoves... Oh, I guess you're... Yeah, you're committed, right? Because he could, he could check shove here with king high. So you have to bet call. So if you're bet calling, you might as well just shove, because you don't really want to get involved here with King High for, for 600 chips. It's quite a significant portion of your stack. $8, 2x turbo, final table. Alright man, yeah, final table, if you just send me the final table, that's enough, you can send it to me. Alligator. I won't look at the whole hand history though, it's just too much. Good raise, steel raise, that's good. Uh, Alright, we'll fold that, fold that, fold that. Alright, T Roy G, thanks for hanging out in the chat. Glad you like it, have a good day. Good raise. Hmm, I don't like this. Playing weak aces out of position, it's very, very hard to, to play them correctly. Um, so I'd prefer keeping the pot small purely because we're out of position. You know, I mean, he's not going to fold anything. He's getting two to one. Oh wow, he did fold. Well, that's surprising. But I, I still prefer just calling the thirty chips, and then you can, you know, try and steal the pot. But it'll be much smaller, and you're risking much less. So now you're risking, you know, three big blinds. Um, 
But if you just limp and then bet the flop, you're only risking one and a half or two big blinds. So it's and you get to see a flop, which is great as well. Uh, all right, if he's a weak player, this is fine to over limp. If you're going to play these weak hands, you need to be good post flop. So far, I've seen a f like you're a bit too aggressive, I would say. But um, you're not terrible. This bet's fine when two people check. Probably have the best hand. This is way too loose. Just fold. This is never going to be profitable. The, short, the big blind's short, and you have... This hand is worse than 50%. So, yeah, this is just the worst mistake so far. Easily. Alright. Mm. I think this is... It's just a min raise. Oh, it's so bad though. This hand is so terrible. Well, for you, slippery three, I would say just fold, because it's really not good enough to defend, even to a min raise. You're just going to get into too many marginal spots. Uh, and from what I've seen, you're just not a strong enough post flop player yet to be able to play this wide of a range. Jay Carver can do this, right? Because he's he's a really good player, but. Um, Sorry, there's a fly. <laughs> that, that must have looked weird to you guys. But, um, I don't think you should be doing this yet. Now, if I was coaching a high-stakes player, I think 3-betting is much better than flatting in this spot. Because, I mean, what are you looking to see on a flop? There's no flops are really that good for you, because you don't have many any connected cards. So, if you want to play and he's a loose player, just 3-bet as a bluff. But, you, my advice to you would be just fold. Okay, good bet. Though it's good to see that you're betting when people check to you. Oh my god, what is going on? Um, yeah, okay, so he check called and then he bets min on this board. Um, if you, hmm, you can, I, 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 I don't like folding, so it's just, do you raise as a bluff now or do you just call and then bluff the river? I think just calling is better because if the river is a diamond and he actually has the, the straight, like the low end of the straight, he might be scared of the flush. So I, I prefer just calling there and then seeing what he does on the river. If he checks, you can bluff the river. Just call that. <laughs> Didn't you call this guy a reg? Yeah, this guy is terrible, by the way. It's good for you guys to see that just because they play a lot, they're not necessarily strong players. Oh wow, we've still got so many hands here. This is too loose. Just uh, not a good play, raising this loose on the button. So I'm going to try and go a bit quicker, because, oh my god, this is slow. Fold that, fold that. Too loose. Okay, second pair, I guess we can fold. Fold that, fold that. Uh, we're isolating a weak ace. I think it's too aggressive with this hand. Um, yeah, I just fold. Love your Australian accents. Greetings from Poland. Oh, I think I know um, Dranus. Uh, what is this? Oh, I, I I thought I knew like how to say hello in Polish, but I I forgot. I'll try and remember it. But welcome, welcome to the stream, man. You see, that's good though. Alright, alligator. I probably won't look at it today, man, because I'm just going to do this one game, and then I'm probably going to um, take a break, and then I'll come back, but I want to play some more. So I'll, I'll look at it on another stream, probably. And if you miss out, that's okay. I've always posted it on my YouTube channel, so you'll always be able to see the review, even if you're not in the chat. Um... Risky bluff. He's very short. I mean, it's okay, because if he doesn't have an ace or a queen, he's just giving up. Because he's short, he's not going to, you know, try and hit a draw or call you down light. So I don't mind this, but you are a very aggressive player, and I, I think that if you tone it back, you might find better results in these low-stakes games. Like, this is not a raise. Just call for set value. Even though he's short, your hand for five big blinds, it's not good enough. Okay, this ISO is fine because he's limping the cutoff and you're on the button so you have direct position. 
you have to call now because you're getting great pot odds. Bad luck. Okay. Again, this is too loose to ISO. I would just call for set value. Threes aren't going to play that great. Well, we're going broke. Good job, bad luck. Raise this. Wow, I find it very interesting that you you raise queen six offsuit, but you fold jack nine suited in the cutoff. That's a clear mistake. Jack nine suited is way way better than queen six offsuit, so that's a raise. Okay, just fold. <laughs> I don't, I'd play it. I'd limp, limp stab, do something. A little loose, but it has worked in the past, so I'll allow it. I will allow it. Top pair, top kicker, we can never fold. Let's just bet pretty big. Okay, fold, fold. Raise is fine against the limper. Heads up pot in position, that's a different situation. Steal that, have to fold, that's fine. Fold that. Uh, it's a little loose again, but okay. Whoa, what, what are we doing? Why are we calling a 3-bet? I know we're getting 3-1, to one, but it costs you... Uh, I can't even see this. This is like 325, so it costs you like 400... No. Yeah, 400 chips. It's just too much of your stack. It costs you a quarter of your stack to speculate with King-9. And if he actually has a monster, you're, you have very bad equity. <laughs> like, you flop a pair, and he's got one pot size bet left. You kind of have to go with it here, because if he's got ace-king, ace-jack, um, you're ahead, and the pot odds say that you should go with it. But, you know, he could have a better hand than that. I don't know what his range is exactly. Uh, I mean, you should just fold preflop. I know you're getting good pot odds, but it costs you too much of your stack. Okay, all-in, ace, it's fine. That This all-in is fine, because you're short. That's good. Fold that. Fold. This just goes on forever, this game. Fold. All in. Good. Fold. 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 All in. Good. Yeah, your all ins are good. And that's a shove. Ten big blinds, ace on the button is just a push. This is six max, right? So that's, we're not even on the bubble yet. Now we're on the bubble. Mm, fold. Good fold. Okay, push. Good push. Uh, uh, I would just check. Mm. I think this is too aggressive. It's just a little too weak. I would just check. It worked out, though, for you. So that's good. Um, Alright, steel is fine. You can also just limp stab. If you want to... A limp stab is much less risky than a raise because you're investing less chips. So I would prefer with this trash hand to just limp stab rather than go for a, a raise. Okay, good C bet though. Really good. C betting these one color boards are very profitable. I would steal this because these guys are. You're now the chip leader, so now is the time where you can be aggressive. Raise, good. I think 9 mans or 18 mans are best to play. What are the biggest differences? Uh, I mean, they're all... They're both good, man. It just depends on what you like playing. Um, I guess the biggest differences is that in 18 mans, you play chip EV on the first table. And that's much looser. So, yeah, it, it's hard to adjust. Uh, 9 mans are tight from, from the first hand, you know a bit tighter. That's, I guess, the main difference. But if you just find what you enjoy playing, raise... Oh, this guy's short. Okay, we can fold this. Okay. 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 Mm. I'd probably bet just to get values from value from draws. If you check raises, we'll just give him credit for an ace. Good fold. I think you played that fine. I would limp, try and hit a good flop. There are a few mistakes in this game. Shove, it's fine. Uh, like, I don't like folding my small blind against fishy players. 
I'd probably go for a limp stab again. It's a very, very profitable play when you have trash in a small blind. Because fish don't know how to um, be aggressive pre-flop. They just want to see flops. Like, again, I'd limp here. Shove there is fine. Okay, we're almost done, guys. That's a fold. That's a fold. Uh, close. I think fold is fine. All in, good. All in, good. Fold, good. Fold, good. Fold, fold. Oh, heads up now. We're in the money. All in, all in. Uh, well, this is an another trick that I learned from Primo, is you can limp here, but folding a queen heads up is way too nitty. Fold is by far the worst play. You can limp, you can shove. They're both way better than folding. Queen is a very high card when you have um, only one player left, and it's, it's chip EV. Alright, so I don't know what happens there, and I don't really care. We have ace-queen. Alright, that's it. Slippy three. Um... Your push fold game is strong. Focus on that and be much, much tighter with raises in early early stages. I don't know, man. There's a few different leaks in there. Try uh, stealing your small blind a bit more with limp stabs as well. But overall, your game is pretty solid. Tell me blinds, limp, trash queen, I just jam. Yeah, I mean, both are good, Bamberlook. It's a new trick that I've learnt from Primo. If you guys don't know who he is, he's a... Twitch streamer who streams uh, spin and goes, a very, very strong heads up player as well.